Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP's coverage of Survivor Global for Survivor 47. I'm your host, Shannon Gus, here to talk about a premiere on Rob Has a Podcast, the TV famous Rob Has a Podcast. Can you believe that? And I have a <laughs> guest here to talk about that premiere. It is the great runner up of the recent Australian Survivor Titans v Rebels, Caroline Cordes. Caroline, thank you for being here. Hey, so good to see you, Shannon. So excited to recap this first episode, which was like I think was one of the best first episodes in the new era history. So I think we're going to have uh, so much fun today, so much to get through, but I'm, yeah, so excited for us to discuss this today. Yeah, a lot to discuss. How have you been, Caroline, since we did the deep dive, having just come off the season, and then I know you travelled and had some Survivor events yourself. So how yep. has the last few months been? The last few months have been really, really good. Um, I'm actually living up in Burley for a little while at the moment, and sunny I mean not that I'm far away from home anyway I'm only less than an hour but I was honestly the weather is so good it's like 26 27 today I just I don't know it's just such a different vibe than Melbourne um but I've been really good yes we've done quite a bit of traveling um I went to the states at the end of last year and saw the finale for season 46 and honestly I had one of the best In times May. of life Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In May. It does yeah. feel like the end of last year. I agree. It's it been does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you played Survivor oh, this year. Like, that was yeah. on TV this year. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> and absolutely. Um, that was honestly one of the I had one of the best times of my life. And to be part of the Survivor family and to go over there and get to know people that you feel like you know anyway. And then you get there and they're like, oh, my God, Caroline. And they know you. It was anyway, I had. Like I said, one of the best times ever. Um, something everyone in, just, in Survivor should do, go and go to one of those finale parties and everything else that goes with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to play, it's probably a good place to meet people you might be playing with given how many super fans are on the season. <laughs> and so, given, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and that's really playing out strategically, which is awesome, and we will talk about it. I will say we are on YouTube now getting into video, not a moment too soon. It is 2024. I'm like, maybe we should be doing the video recap. So we're doing that. Well done, like, Shannon. For being, yes, I know. Well done for getting into something <laughs> years late, finally getting pulled across the line to do video. Of course, then now I'm coming off the back of being sick for a couple of days. So yeah, sorry if I look and sound terrible. But I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No, I'm not fishing. I genuinely am just like, need to be at my best for our first video recap. But I'm excited. I'm energized by the episode and what so you you thought it was one of the best premieres what did you love about the premiere I don't know I just feel like um like sometimes during some of those episodes like some of those ep episodes you feel like you it, things are getting a little bit lost or you feel like why am I not seeing more of this or why am I not seeing more of that I feel like yes I didn't see enough of all of the cast but overall I was captivated from start to finish um did I want more? Of course, we always want more. But um, I felt really, really captivated. Those those characters and those contestants that they really focused on were super interesting. Um, I can't wait to get in to chat about each one of them. Um, there were some of my there were some people that were definitely becoming my faves quite quickly. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me, I, and I said this to you a little earlier before we recorded, I mean, to compare it to, like, the Titans v. Rebel premiere, which I truly yeah. think is one of the best premieres ever, is a hard thing to do, and that premiere is so epic. Like, you travel, like, journeys in that premiere, not like the journeys they went on in this episode. Harder yeah. to do that with the six-person tribes, you know, as it's been talked about to death. There are inbuilt issues with the format that limit, right. I think, some of how dynamic that is. You know, when Andy talks about the potential for relationships, you know, th that would be a more difficult math equation if it were bigger tribes, you know. Exactly. I don't want to do the math right now of how many relationships are available in the 12 people that you have. Exactly. Compared to six. So that is extreme. I think within the new era, there are parts I really like. I really like this cast, but I've loved them from the preseason. Part of yeah, me wonders. Yeah, me too. Part of me wonders, do I do I like the cast so much and did I enjoy this episode so much because I know them from the excellent preseason coverage that I listened to with Mike? Yeah. Or is it in this episode? And I do think that the episode didn't do justice to how great the cast is. Like if you didn't yeah. listen to the preseason stuff, I can see how maybe you come away not having had that justice from the cast because so much of it was scavenger hunt based and I've seen enough boxes and keys probably to last me four lifetimes. I think that's Yeah, that's, that's right. Mean, and was, why was, didn't was, they just smash it open? Like seriously, no. why didn't they do a Mark Warnock and just smash it open anyway? You know what I love about Titans v Rebels? That that was the box that we got. 
that was not like (laughs) no open I mean it was comical to a degree but it was like way too much um and I you know everyone gets a confessional the new era is very good with that but I still felt that from a new era perspective where again it can be quite even I thought this was pretty lopsided there's still a lot of people to get to know um I think that it was quite limited in that way I think because so much of it was on the trek so those would be my major complaints because obviously those are the things I'm going to get out of the way first but you know there was a lot of compelling stuff here as well but yeah I just feel like do we need that many boxes and keys and so did Rome find a key that's going to lead him to a box it's going to lead him to three more boxes because I simply (laughs) cannot next week that was Gabe (laughs) no Gabe and Rome Rome found a key but it's going to lead him to multiple boxes and Gabe is (laughs) Gabe's already through the boxes and then someone on Gata God forbid will find another key is there many more boxes? Like no, I, I know that's mind. next next episode, baby. I can't do it. I physically <laughs> refuse. I think like I just it's I just it's too much for me. Like on Noddles, they were saying that you know that's the that's like the structure of the show that like creates decision making, which we will talk about, and it, it is yeah. true to a degree. But like it's too much too much time investment. Like it feels like that's how they've really chosen to use the extra time for the two hours here or what is 90 minutes. And I feel like there's definitely diminishing returns where a lot of it isn't decision-making and a lot of it is just running around often individually in some type of scavenger hunt um, where there was a great secret scene that Rome posted, which was like much more about the actual dynamics, even around searching for things. So I'd much rather get that. And we'll talk about that secret scene than just like box after box. Oh my God. Like, please (laughs) no more boxes. (laughs) And imagine if Andy was in a 12-person tribe. Like, imagine how that would have overwhelmed him. Like, so being in a six-person tribe, he was overwhelmed enough. Imagine being in a 12. That That is, that is it's a lot. Well, it's hard because if he's in a 12-person tribe, maybe he feels like he finds more of his people, you know? So, and with John, I feel like he was really cursed by the six-person tribe because I feel, which we'll talk oh. about, like, I feel like it was a very physical decision where he has a lot more room to hide as someone who's not even that weak, but, like, when you're kind of out socially from four people, yeah. which is just an unfortunate way to start the game. And when you're against like yeah. one other seemingly more physical person, there's just not a lot of room to move. And that's that's how constricting that the the six tribes, the six person tribes can be. But yeah. I mean, I want to, I feel like this episode for me, like the major theme, and I, I teased this to you before we recorded, but I feel like I've said this for a while, but it's never been more clear to me in like the binary and the theme from this episode. And I feel like I have the secret to new era at least new era early game survivor maybe just early Ooh, game survivor tell internet. us Shannon. Okay, this is my thesis point and it is based on things i've said before but before every decision you ever make this is a secret for every decision you make within at least the first week of survivor and especially new era survivor you don't ask yourself one question and then just go yep. based on what that is mm-hmm. is this a social decision with hopefully a majority of the tribe if yeah. it's social do it if it's antisocial yeah. individual, don't yeah. do it. Because Absolutely. I feel like every single person who made a very individual or advantage-based or aggressive decision in this episode was wrong across yeah. the board. And yeah. every social decision is something that I think is good. I mean, how do you kind of look at that? Obviously, you start off really social, making like the middle-aged mafia, like making allies, yeah. and then the game builds up. But how do you kind of feel about that as someone who's played to start Especially- the game? Especially when you're in those first few days of the game, you're still getting to know people and sometimes it's difficult to get to know other people. Obviously, I had 11 11 other people I needed to get to know. I'm sure in a six-person tribe it's a lot quicker because you can all sit down together and you're doing a lot of things together, whereas we were off kind of in groups, do you know what I mean? But that social capital that you gain in those first few days is so, so important. And yes, you, I absolutely agree with you. You need to base a lot of what those dis- big decisions or even little decisions on what that social, how much social capital is that going to give you for the, for the next couple of games, at least until you get to be on the next tribal, your own next tribal council. So yes, it's huge. And I, I feel like not enough um, in this episode that not enough emphasis was kind of placed on that. And I feel like, yeah, that it sh- it should have been. Social capital is like it's gold out there. Yeah, I, I wrote an article in the off season that I'll plug for the confessional, um, which was about like social capital, um, you know, yeah. accruing social capital to spend it strategically, which is a point I've yeah. talked about before. And I really like yeah. wrote that out. And I, I feel like more and more sure about that as a concept because it's like, okay, so you're going to go after 
getting some sort of tool in the game which is an idol going yeah. you know and we've seen they've they've seen in the in the last two seasons that that the that's becoming very public very long like it's exhaustive you're going to be investing time obviously like largely individual time if that's the decision you make into getting mm. a tool in the game every single relationship you make can be a tool in the game that's more beneficial so if that's, that's right. the priority like there's a finite amount of time and energy that you have if you're investing it in that very individual thing I think that is absolutely the wrong decision not to mention it's public and shady so for me <laughs> I mean I'd be leaving beware advantages as my second option my first option and I've said this for a long time and I really think it's the way to go is bring people in like the re yeah. before didn't fully make the four on that on purpose but it yep. happened and it works so well like if I'm yeah. gay well the best thing he did on this was bringing in Sue bring yeah. in your four yeah cultivate the four on something like you found a clue now I'm bringing you in immediately and now we're building something with trust and like real capital that you've built to build right. social capital That's if right. Rome had done that rather than being individual and everyone looking at him, everyone's looking at me so on the outs I mean Rome could get Genevieve Teeny and Keyshawn because it feels like that could have been possibly yeah. a group and that could be the group, but to be so individual, to give that time, to have people find you. I mean, for Gabe, it was not good. TK clocked him. He's unaware that TK did not buy the lie. For Rome, yeah. he's so out. Like, just not so. That's the right a question. Do you, do you lie? Like, do you do you go and tell him what what you're up to, or do you, or do you well, not? My thing is, he should have never been in that position because had he brought in the group from the beginning yeah he'd be fine you know yeah. he'd never be accidentally found he wouldn't even be at that risk and if he's found by one of the other two people it doesn't matter you're not in the majority then you lie whatever they feel bad about you you're yeah. already out so and you bring, if you've and already you bring, gotten ahead of that then there's yeah. no risk of anyone finding you because you are in control of how that information is disseminated yeah 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 it was um so different between that between both um Gabe and Rome the way that they went about it I feel like Rome uh, sorry Gabe bringing in Sue was yeah, obviously a really really good point and um and I think that those two are going to become really really great allies I like lo love the fact that he saw her as the older woman and thought I'm, go I'm that was part of his strategy I'm going straight in I'm going straight to that older woman I know that she's got life experience I know that she's you know when, once he found out what she did she's probably you know she's clearly a very smart woman that um and she's calm under pressure she seemed like she was calm under pressure anyway so I feel like that yeah, was good do it with two more people now you have a majority that's right. And all and in my notes, I've got like all you need is that four person majority. Like that's what you need to be from the second you you know you're going into a tribe of six. So you know you need to go out there and find your tribe of four. Like you need to get your yeah. four person alliance and get stuck with it and get stuck into it and start working hard because that is going to pay dividends down the line. Yeah, the math is simple and it's literally was it's written simple. out on the screen by Andy. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't be going out and trying to find a beware advantage because that already is shady oh, and know. investment of time. But if you stumble on a beware advantage, now you have a cap now you have the capital to yeah. you know, to really make friends with it. And especially because these beware advantages have been so as we've seen, like now is the meta around like they're long and public and like you need help and like get that help. Like do it as a group, yeah. bring people in because if you're yeah. gonna do it individually. Like, you don't even know what you're gaining. Gabe gains at first a one tribal idol, then a, he's eventually earned a, a three yeah. tribal idol. Yeah. Like, that can barely offset the social capital you've lost. Like, now you need it when you might have never even needed it. And um, you've what lost you think, your vote. Like, and, yeah, and, you, and you lose your vote. So you need allies yeah. to cover for the fact that you've lost your vote. You That's need right. To, I will take the risk on this. I'll lose my vote and we'll do it together. There's yeah. so much there to be done collaboratively, especially with yeah. so much risk. There's a way to make it really social. And I just yeah. feel like Rome and Gabe made it really antisocial. What did you think about Gabe tapping out at the three tribal idol rather than taking making it a full game final five idol? I I probably would have done the same, to be honest. I, I feel like because he didn't know what was required to get to that next idol and he's and if he did he still he didn't have his he still didn't have a vote at the next tribal so I'm like no get yourself through the next three tribal councils if you po possibly can and then try from there but no that's probably where I would have gone to be honest um and especially when you're out there like you know you're you feel under pressure like and it's that um you know it's that decision uh, instead of thinking like right to the end of the game, you've just got to think about 
the next three tribal councils or the next two tribal councils or the next one tribal council. I wouldn't be looking ahead to the end of the game right now. I feel like I agree. Like, don't, I mean, like my second option is don't take it at all. Once you've yeah. done, like once you've already put so much heat on yourself, TK has found you and you have it through like the first like leg of this trek or scavenger hunt. And then the second, yeah. like you are in for a penny. Like you are too <laughs> yeah. far in the hole to turn around, like too far in the well that Rome was in upside down, I feel. Oh my um, God. I was just waiting for somebody to walk down the path or walk around the corner. I mean, you know, you've got to be so careful in the fact that, you know, Rome had it a little bit harder than Gabe in that he had to get wet. So you can... Like, it was so thinking, funny. <laughs> it was so funny. And imagine coming around the corner or walking down to the well and seeing somebody's <laughs> ass literally hanging out of the well. You'd be like, you'd be so mad that they're dirtying up the well anyway. So. Well, you know, I feel like Max Dawson was the one who was, like, washing his foot in the pot water. Like, people oh. have loaded out for less than dirtying up some water. So, yeah, look, if you were to see Rome, you might just be like classic Rome yeah. you know he's the kind of guy who would be upside down in the well like who knows but it, it, it was comical like part like the fact that he just was wet the fact that like gave the box that kept falling like I, I, I laughed know. At and, the, and um, it felt like the tribe could hear it like he yeah like, they probably he couldn't good. but like I feel like I, I could know. hear it from Australia like it was yeah. it was like the loudest sound just need to be like very very quiet and then like the clanging was it was comical but yeah if I was Gabe I would I'd be just taking I'd be like now I'm in it. Now I'm taking the full idol, yeah. which is so much further than three tribals. Like that could that could be everything. But obviously, again, he shouldn't even be in that position. He should have, if that was a decision he was going to make, never take the aware. Or if he had brought in multiple people, you could easily yeah. take the full yeah. um, season idol because you'd have people looking out for you. Yeah, but he so wasn't. Just shows. Yeah, he only really had two. Yeah, yeah. And that's the decision he made, though. Like that just shows how wrong and that is because he could have a full why... idol, a full season idol. Do you wonder whether he actually discussed with Sue about, okay, I've got you, who else should we bring in? Because you could see her getting quite close to Caroline as well. And, he and should have. Uh, uh, yeah, so should he have said to Sue, hey, yeah. let's, you know, who are you close to right now? Do you feel comfortable bringing yeah. her into an alliance yeah. with us? Who's Caroline close to you? So I'm Who's quite, our four? Let's build, yeah, and exactly. And the re before so well. Let's be yeah. the re before. Yeah. Like, look how well that went for them to making yeah. it to the final three, one winning, all getting to the end game. Extraordinary. Yeah. They all got this idol together. Let's be that group really intentionally. Yeah. And then you'd never have to wonder, should I take the full season idol? Because you'd have, you, you'd be fine. You're the majority of your well, tribe. You've, you, you've got your posse around you. So you know you've got that support. You know that you're going to be communicating sure. with these people. You yeah. know that when you get to, um, when you're getting to, um, oh gosh, um, what's it called? When you're getting to scramble, that you you know the right people that you just need to make a decision with really quickly, and then scramble is done. You know, yeah. there's not everyone's not stuffing stuffing up all over the place. An interesting thing it was from the preseason that a lot of the players seemed very anti advantages and big moves coming off watching yeah. most of 46 where yeah. people were voted out with so many idols in their pockets where everyone turned on their number one. Yeah. It felt like a cast that was investing more socially that was kind of away from this meta of the advantages. And I think that that has played out in the way that that's going badly mm -hmm. for people. But I did appreciate that multiple boxes aside that the show was giving some decision making and like the multiple yeah. options and that idols are less powerful by the fact that people have to keep earning it with difficulty um, to get like a full idol. I thought that was good, but yeah, few yeah. keys and boxes. Few yes. Keys. Yeah. yeah. Can we, can we do something else, please? This was, this was a lot. I mean, for, yeah. And so for Rome on that, um, I thought it was funny with Rome. He criticizes Asia, which I'll, I'll do soon as well on her decision to put her hand up for the, for the yeah. trek and to, to go um, try and earn yeah. supplies. He's like, the social game is how I win my million dollars. Proceeds to do the opposite of that for the next hour of the show. Um, I know. Yeah. What did you think of Rome? Oh, well, and, and then when he does get it and then he just walks off and there are like, there are, the rest of the tribe is right behind him and he's- Look, I, I think it makes sense. Do you? you? Know, like, no, I'm joking. It's like, well, my, my cat also thinks no. that if she can't see me, I can't see her. Like, if her <laughs> tail is sticking out of the blinds, but she can't see me, I can't see her. Is that how things work, right? Like, that's what my cat says. So. Well, I have a cat honest. as well. And when he, like, sometimes he'll sit on the couch beside us and he's looking at us and he can see us. But then some other times he's turned around the other way and he can't see us. And it's and like, can't yeah, we're not there. That's exactly what my cat thinks. Yeah. So, Talk to the butt. Roman, my cat. 
and your yeah, cat. Yeah, have a lot in common. Is. Yeah. Is Roam a cat? Because then I'm coming around on the gameplay. But otherwise, yes, I think that if everyone's walking, you can't just be like, I'm not here. You know, like they they can see you. But then he, <laughs> it seemed like that secret um, scene that we didn't, that we saw on his ex, that that secret scene kind of showed that he maybe was trying to gain a little bit more social capital there back from um, losing a little bit when he did do that walk off um, after he had found it. So, we'll, yeah. No, it's I thought be the secret scene was terrible for him. But just to, so to clarify. Oh, again, this, yeah. The secret scene would have been like one of my favourite scenes of the episode mm. if it had made the episode. Mm. Um, I thought it was more compelling certainly than all of all of like the scavenging but also – just was a great scene and it kind of follows on for 46 which had some incredible secret scenes that didn't make the cut and like mm. I understand that like Nami you know don't make the end game or what but like mm. there was some stuff between like Venus and Tevin like some great stuff even <laughs> stuff between like Maria and Ben that like you would think would be essential and didn't make the edit um yeah. and this secret scene so to just clarify you can go find it um I retweeted it and it's on Rome's Twitter where um Sol was like you know I kind of like Rome so that's an interesting dynamic because mm. we see him in the episode being like, Rome's mm. doing too much. But he's like, yeah, Rome's doing too much. I'm going to tell him. And he's like, Rome, do less. You know? I think what I was saying on my TV, just do less. Um, mm. And Rome isn't like, thank you so much for the knowledge. Sol That's does, right. like, he's like, oh, are people talking about me? And Sol says, no, but just just do less and like maybe Sol's yeah. gonna be like people are kind of clocking it a little bit so that yeah, that's like, what I would so that Rome really knows he's really that's doing right. me a solid isn't just giving me his opinion but Rome yeah. is offended don't tell me how to play the game it's like Rome I think that I maybe know. you should, should get a few lessons um and like is very anti that and talks about it to Genevieve so this was I thought really really fascinating and speaks to a few things we saw from Rome in the episode where he thinks it's going great despite the fact that he knows Asia clocked him despite the fact that multiple people walked past him kind of while yeah. he was doing this and he thinks he's someone not reading the room is he no yeah. he's not he's really not. not yeah yeah no I totally agree and um it'll be interesting to see where that story goes do you know what I mean like in terms of are they going to start thinking him super shady all the time now because he has spent so much time away from camp and so much time on his own and he's really not integrating himself into the tribe to get to know those other people so that he is gaining some social capital. Yeah, which is what he says. He was the <laughs> one who gave the confessional about how you should invest in the social relationships and then he's doing the very individual thing. He brings in no one, not even I know, and, and, and maybe... You know, like some people are like that. Like they can say all the all the things that need to be said, but they can't actually self-reflect. They can't see that within themselves. And he's a prime example of that, isn't he? Yeah. He says in the scene, yeah. scene to Genevieve, I would definitely tell you. And then he tells us he would not, and he is not. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's good. Is it a social move with the majority? No. Think about, that's the one question. I will, though, say that I agreed with the advice he couldn't even follow. When he said he disagreed with Asia, I agreed. I'm very critical of everyone who put their hand up to do yeah. what would have been Sweat versus Savvy and was now yeah. just like another multi-stage challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Jeff Jeff says that it's basically it's to earn supplies. I'm trying to the exact wording that he gives. He says it's a task to earn supplies and he gives nothing else. So you know there's going to be a lot on you um, yeah. and you know you're going to be fully separated from the tribe in the first few hours of social Yeah, training. which is so really important to be part of. Yeah. yeah. Gold, literally gold. Um, TK, Tiana, and Carl, who all do the scissors, paper, rock, which Jeff loves. Um, yeah. Critical of all three of them. Asia yeah. as well, like putting up her hand. I mean, it seems at least that no one else wanted to do it and she kind of took one for the team, which is kind, but there's a reason maybe no one else wants to do it, you know, for what we're There was saying. a better way of doing it without putting so much of a target on her back. Yeah, I mean, if no one wants to do it, then you should all be drawing stuff. Yeah. Like, you yes. should not have to put yourself up for that. It is, yeah. it's not a good thing. And I think that, you know, to be isolated socially, having to come back and tell a story with so much on your back. I mean, it seems she rebounded well from that, having not got the supplies. But mm. why should, like, why even put yourself in that position, poking your head up? I, I really, really disagree. And it's I not what that, I would have done. And it's obviously yeah. not what you would have done. Um, no, it's, I think that's clear. But I feel like, you know, a lot of these players out there, they are fans of Survivor. And so they just want to give it the biggest red hot go that they can, they want to be involved in everything and hope, you know, obviously she was hoping that she was going to win and imagine but even if you win that. even if you win like you come back yes, with, and it goes well for tk then you still lost those hours 
Mm. Yes, yeah. I, it's not something that I would have wanted to give up and I'm a huge Survivor fan, so it's not something that I would have given up easily. To do it. To do it, absolutely yeah, not. Because you want no. that opportunity. Yeah, I, 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 want, like, oh, I, I want to be able to, challenge. yeah, I want to be able to sit with my tribe, bond with my yeah. tribe. I want to be able to talk and get to know people as you're building shelter, as you're, you know, getting everything ready for hopefully getting your supply kit. Yeah, I mean, putting yourself out there, having to wrestle with TK, who felt so good about her, you know, in the preseason, and, and maybe he still does, but like the wrestling, and then he comes back and he's like, oh, she tried to wrestle it from me. Like, why are we even talking about you? You know, like I you know. shouldn't even be there because mm. you shouldn't put your hand up because you shouldn't be poking your head up. Um, and I thought that it could have gone really badly. They were trying to form a four-person majority before she'd even really gotten the chance to introduce herself. But yeah. luckily, I think she got lucky in the fact that Teeny knows her from the podcast, yes. likes her from the podcast. Yes, and, absolutely. And to, be, to be fair to, to Asia as well, she does very well with that. She comes back, she socially integrates. It seems like they've made mm. a new four without Rome and even Genevieve connected to Rome. She's doing her work, which they're all kind of doing and throwing Rome under the bus. Like she rallies mm. well and Rome buries himself in a well. Um, yeah. So that works <laughs> out very well, very well. But that's I Asia's know. superpower, isn't it? That's yeah. her superpower. Like she knows that she's she's coming to this game knowing she's very good at forging connections with people. That's part of, that's what she does in the outside world. She knew that was going to be her superpower coming into it. So it was actually quite beautiful to see it all play out like that. But I like it, like you and I agree, you know, I wouldn't have put myself out there to go on that journey. Yeah. And I feel like also that, you know, the fact that they even tussled over the getting yeah, exactly. The, you know, like I don't want to be tussling. No, no. I um and and I mean it would have been like, okay, you're there first, you've got the key, off you go kind of thing. I don't think there needed to be any any kind of tussle, but um anyway it's you can be in the position that. where you're even tussling like I think that she should be hustling not tussling uh and I, I was just about to say the same thing I would have been saying right okay if we get to a point where there's a tribe swap you know I'm Asia this is you know this is a little bit about me you know I'd love to you know love to you know, make some kind of alliance right now and let's see what happens when when tribe swap swap happens and so yeah Hustling instead of tussling. It was hard because it was such a competitive task that they were given, but that's why oh. I would, you don't know what it's going to be. You know it's for supplies. It might yeah. be individual like Sweat and Savvy have been, but it might also be against each other. Like, yeah, again, just being in that environment where, again, possibility for connection, but at the expense of the socializing with your tribe, a possibly anti-social connection, which it yeah. was, is yeah. so damaging. I think that she does well after. I think that she... Yeah compounds on the luck and does well with it the teeny knows yeah. her. and i think that even if teeny didn't know her she still could have come back and been really social and been fine but she gave herself a deficit that she then had to work back and like for why right. like don't do don't do the deficit to begin with. and she obviously thought that she could but i think that um teeny was kind of the icing on the cake for her and that yeah. was super that super was helpful yeah. yeah 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 definitely and you know tk does well as well coming back with a possible deficit but does get the supplies and is so naturally charismatic yeah. that he's kind of winning allies there as well but again like just do that. Just go in being charismatic from the get-go. We haven't even t spoken about Gata, Gata, yeah, Gata, and Andy. Gata. Yeah. yeah, yes. Gata, Gata, um, Andy. Gata. Let's yeah. talk about Andy. How are you feeling okay. about Andy? Look, I, I felt for him so much when we saw him like completely unraveling in that challenge. When you saw him lying on the ground and the cameras went woo. It was like, okay, we know that it. This like I could as a as a midwife and a nurse, I know his color's still good. He's obviously still got his eyes open. He's still breathing. He's fine. Um, so I, to me, it it felt like he was having a panic attack. I said, turned around to my husband and I said, I feel like he's having a panic attack, and I think that's what it was. I felt I felt really sorry for him, but I just wanted to say to him, shut up, shut up, shut up, stop talking, stop talking. I really feel like you're throwing yourself under the bus and taking John along with you. Um, it was, yeah, it was really sad to see. I mean, obviously on our season, we had a couple of um, episodes where we had Scotty leave due to um, he he had had enough of the game and he wanted to leave and it kind of brought those memories back of him and how it, it can make you spiral. You've got to be a really, really, you've got to be really strong mentally out there because 
like you're on your own and you're the only person that you're fully relying on is yourself at all times. And um, I, you really have to try and remain calm and stop that paranoia. I just felt like that paranoia was just overwhelming him in the most humongous way. Um, yeah. Felt for him. I know he's a huge, huge fan of the game. Um, and I think a little bit of insight, he was, wasn't he, he got through casting in season to the finals in season 45, um, I heard. So, yeah, he um, pardon? He was really yeah. close with yeah, a recent With season, season 45. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And so he's obviously had a long time to think about what this opportunity, if he, if he gets this opportunity again, what's what it's going to mean to him and how he's going to feel out there. But nothing can quite prepare you for being being out there and obviously it overwhelmed him. What did you think? Yeah. What uh, do you think? Well, of I cried, but I cry a lot. Yeah. I was pretty sick. But <laughs> no, I, no, I really did. I, I cry a lot, but I'm so productive. I, I um, No, I felt for Andy so, so much. Um, yeah. It's a curse to care too much about anything. Like it, yeah. it's a curse on Survivor and like, it's a good thing, but also a curse in life. Like I, I've, how many times in my life have I thought, I wish I cared less about anything. Like yeah, Andy cares so much about the game. It's a well-worn path for super fans. You had it a little bit with Eden yeah. out there. Yeah. It's like some other people are going on and they're having fun. And it's obviously the opportunity of a lifetime, but like yeah. the passion to play, the paranoia, he got in his own head. He was his yeah. own enemy. And we've seen it so many times with super fans where it's just, it's too much. You care too yeah. much. It's overwhelming as yeah. it was for him that you yeah. care too much. And I, I really, really felt for him because I felt like he was just all in his head. And had he not done that, I think he would have been okay. Given that yeah. he's literally still in the game, even with doing as much as he did. So that's how much like no. leeway he had. That's how I... little he had to spiral because you have the leeway that they think they need to keep you physically, even with all of that, he's going to stay. So had he not to, to, to begin, like, had he not like, if the desperation hadn't reaped from the mm. beginning, and I know mm. that he was kind of out with John, but this is some, you know, initial stuff that can change at any point, you know, had that not happened and he, and he hadn't gone to Rachel, Rachel's like, he's so, so sweet, you know, maybe like not a huge strategist, but he's yeah. really, really sweet. So he has some potential. Then he's going to pull and Rachel she could, aside. And she could manipulate him. Like she, I felt like she could have done, and she still obviously can, but she can do more with him. I mean, I feel like he trusts her. So I feel like it's going to benefit her game to keep him there. But what I am unsure about is his stability, like his ability is he going to be okay for the next couple of days till they, um, you know, they do or do not get to another tribal council? And how is he going to control those demons that he's kind of got swirling around in his head at the moment? And that is, yeah, it's really sad. I, I, I didn't cry, but I felt so much empathy for him um, because being out there is overwhelming. And I remember at times when I did, um, I would just take myself off for a walk and go to the go to the water, do something, get myself away, and just calm myself down. I did not want anyone to see me in that kind of state whatsoever, and I yeah tried not to ever let it be shown. But you can't help but feel that at some point out there, it does get overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, I think it's actually relatable to life in dealing with anxiety, which is like for sure when you have anxiety, right. you're like really trying to like have these really practical ways to kind of quell that anxiety. I know I've done that. Mm -hmm. I've been in like the worst states and I've tweeted, like, don't be tweeting, you know, like, but and the same thing with him, like he's trying to get something to like really cover that. And yeah. that's not right. Like, unfortunately, when you're anxious and you're trying to like solve it, it's like, you're the worst person to be making decisions. Like oh, the yeah. anxious version of you should not be doing these things. Obviously in the extremely depleted way that he was on the mat. And I know that Lindsay from 43 um, as a nurse has yeah. been talking about, you know, physically if he should have even been on the mat to kind of have that breakdown I mean I don't know if we can put it fully on physically because I think he was making a lot of like erratic decisions throughout yeah. and it was based on that anxiety but yeah. yeah he's trying with Rachel to really like give me the balm for this you know like if I say it all mm -hmm. maybe it'll make it better and it actually it seems to largely make it worse like you're trying and trying and trying and I think usually you kind of like you, you're digging deeper um into like the wrong direction when you're making those decisions with anxiety. oh yeah he so was, he was digging empathize. deep yeah. yeah, yeah, not the digging deeper that Jeff wants you to do. Jake, no. he was like digging deeper <laughs> again into the well that Rome is in <laughs> on the other right. tribe. And yeah, I think that like I empathize so much with I like I love Andy. You know, um, Andy reached out to me a few months ago when I was going through it with such a kind uh -huh. message, and 
it really pains me that I'm sure he's going through it or I hope not, but could be going through it a lot worse right yeah. now. Um, you know, like I could see how he got in his head and I think there are parts there, like we did see conversations where he's on the outs. Like the coconut thing, I don't yeah. really think is anything because I think more that they're applauding <laughs> John as like a self-deprecating survivalist. You know, oh, you yeah. got the coconut. And like it's, it's novel that you got the coconut open. Yeah. But I also think while that actual interaction probably doesn't mean as much, it is a symbol for him of actual dynamics that are worrying. But again, considering that he yeah. does all of that and still stays, he had more more runway. John said before the meltdown, he was hoping like Annika, Rachel um, and the, yeah. and Andy and John could be a four. Not sure it would have panned yeah. out, but he wouldn't have gone. He didn't go. Um, and there yeah. would have been options. And he just, everything he did just made that stock plummet further and further. And I definitely feel yeah. for him that that went so badly. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think that they didn't vote him out? Yeah, I mean, what do you, I mean, Stephen and Rob were saying it was a good decision. Do you think, what do you think about the decision not to vote him out? Look, I think it's, it's a, re- I'm, I'm quite divided because I really wanted to see John go further because I think he's quite a charismatic personality out there. And I think that he was also a huge fan of the game. Knowing that Andy was a huge fan of the game, I, it, it is going to be interesting to see whether he can actually calm himself down and really start thinking smartly and start thinking strategically and start talking with Rachel in a more in a more non like in, 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 with more sense. Do you know what I mean? Um, more, more smartly, but I. I mean, it's probably not what I would have done. I probably would have kept John. Yeah, but because it's really hard to think that. Um, okay, how are we going to trust him? How how are, how is he going to be going forward? Is he going to be able to perform in challenges? Is this going to overwhelm him again? Um, I know that they talked a lot about strength. We need to maintain strength. We need to maintain strength. And I feel like John could have bought so much more, not just in terms of his strength, but, uh, you know, if they get to more puzzles, I feel like John was going to be a better puzzle maker than um, than Andy probably will because I think John's got his head, he's got his head well together. But I was really sad to see John go. It's always sad to see somebody go, isn't it? It's it's yeah. awful. It and wasn't good options. No, it wasn't it was good options. It a great options. cast. I think that's yeah, the, the pain of the exactly. great cast where you're like, I don't want any of these people to go, but... I mean, they have Rachel and Annika on the puzzle, so maybe they think that they're okay from a puzzle they're standpoint. Okay. It went yeah. very, very well in the first challenge, and then their boat capsized, and they were kind of behind in yeah. the um, yeah. second challenge. How so, bad was that? My God, yeah. all those boats kept the two of them capsizing. That was just insane. You would be beside yourselves out there because those boxes looked heavy. Like more so boxes. Heavy. I it's know. It's yeah, fine. and 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 so much bigger than their boat. So the fact that the Red Tribe got to the beach as well as they did, honestly, that was fan- that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they really um, beasted but- that challenge. <laughs> they beasted. I love but it. But that's yeah. what this is why I'm thinking. Okay, I'm like very against the decision to keep Andy in the game. Yeah. Um, for like two two majories. Like last, I know they were talking about this on Orders. Like last season. It was like Jelinski is like a wild card, but good at challenges, which you can put in the Andy spot. Yes. So should we keep him? And I thought, yes. Yeah. You know, I thought Jelinski was good enough at challenges yes. that that was essential. But Jelinski was up against other wild cards and Jess and Banu. That is yeah. not the case here. Like Andy no. might be slightly stronger That's in challenges, right. but if anything, he's a wild card. And John brings a good energy. He's even yeah. killed. He's a little bit out, but he's going to be like a good asset to the tribe. If you never lose again, I think that John could be like a good option. Andy mm-hmm. is... Like, again, as we're saying, like, we're trying to manage this wild card. I think it's really, really tough. Um, and I actually think that it will make them worse at challenges. Like, you've gained a little bit of physicality at the expense of having to manage this person, a wild card who's thrown your whole tribe under the That's bus. Right. I'd rather go in cohesive, especially in a fairly even challenge field, as we're saying, where for the, I think the first time in the new era, they all got flint. There was, you know, kind of wins across yeah. the board. Their boat capsized, it's unfortunate, but otherwise it feels fairly even. I actually think that had they kept John, it might have been the rare season where there is no disaster tribe in the new era and it was pretty even. But now keeping someone actually ironically for challenge strength, keeping Andy, I think that he might implode them. And even if they get rid of Andy next, now they're down to four. Now they might be the disaster tribe. So I think it was actually the wrong physical decision and the wrong game decision. And they kept it for physical reasons that I actually think will backfire. And thinking about it, I do agree with you. Um, I also think that 
going back into the next challenge, those other tribes are going to look at that tribe and go, what? You didn't get rid of the easy Yeah, vote? like what is so wrong with you that he can throw you yeah. all under the bus and yeah. you're still doing that? Yeah. Like you don't because look confident. What, yeah, what you love is an easy vote and it doesn't come along very often and you do like because at the end of the day it's going to be hard to vote anybody out but if you can get any excuse to vote somebody out, you know, Andy definitely had the target on his back. So, I yeah, I really feel for John that he was the one that had to go home and, oh, my gosh, and what could have been. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, really upset to lose John. I do think it was a physical decision. I know there's been debate. Oh, yeah. You know, John's obviously a bigger threat than Andy, yes, than Andy, who's now, like, the least threatening person in the game. He's yeah. a great speaker. He's literally been a presidential speaker. Um, yeah, more exactly. Than that. But I don't think that that was what they were thinking of now. Um, I think Sam kind of talks about John playing hard, but also Andy has said he's a strategist. He will throw even his number one under the bus. And Andy and John are putting out Annika's name together. If, yeah. if anything, we saw Andy say to John in, in confessional, he's the one yes. who put out Annika's name first and wanted her out. So he's as much to blame if not, and we know actually more, um, I don't think it was that Sam mentions the physicality, the conversations we see are on physicality, Rachel mentions the physicality. I think it was a yeah, very, very physical That's right. Um, physical vote for me. And I do think that, you know, for each person, like uh, Annika, again, they're both throwing her name out. We know Andy wants her out as much or more. So it's kind of yeah. either way. I think she campaigned really well of why Andy should go and talking about how the physicality isn't enough of a differentiator. So I think mm. she did, you know, that was a good argument, but it didn't work. Um, for Rachel, which we'll talk about, you, you mentioned, and, and I want to talk more about it. Um, I would have cultivated Andy, as you're saying, and we'll talk about it. But at the point where she hasn't cultivated Andy, like definitely cut him. So for yeah. her especially, and for Sam, um, who it seemed like was, you know, somewhat the swing vote. Um, we didn't see him as much from Sierra's point of view, but I think for Sam, no. he does like his approach, he doesn't want to be the strong guy probably doesn't want yeah. to be left with someone seen as like the older guy in John who's 42 it's depressing let's not talk about it um but yeah like doesn't want to just be like the girls him and John yeah. but unfortunately like Andy is so much of a liability that you can't like have and eat that cake like yeah, it, 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 like I see his approach but unfortunately it does not work in this permutation of people so yeah I see like what you know possibly what they're thinking but it just for me was like a like woefully misjudged decision yeah, yeah, it does. And you've got to wonder whether Sam's thinking is Andy more of a shield for me than John. You know, is um, is the way that John was playing the game because he was, what, there's 11 years difference between him and the next youngest player. Like, is that enough of a age gap that John didn't really feel part of the whole entire group? So, yeah, was it an age thing? Was it a physical thing? Yes, it's probably a physical thing. And you and I both agree they've, I think they've made the wrong decision. Let's see how it, it plays dang. out. But yeah. 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 Um, yeah, you mentioned Rachel. So this was a yeah. big, kind of a big thing. So Andy, so what do you feel about Andy kind of going to Rachel and then kind of like building on what you've said about Rachel here? What she, How she kind of, you know, responded to that? Well, it's a good question, isn't it? You know, was she right in kind of not locking in like a really strong alliance with him because she, I mean, we can see that she's smarter and more strategic than he is at this point of the game. I don't think his head is, I'm sure this guy is a really smart guy, but he's obviously his head's all over the place and she wants somebody that she can lock and load and they're going to be a number one or a number two. Do you know what I mean? And when you can't do that with somebody that you can, like when he asked her to separate herself from everybody in camp at night time because he was having probably a panic attack and she felt like oh my god you're putting a target on my back why are you doing this to me uh, I can see it from both sides can't you like I kind of yeah. can actually yeah and, and I'll tell you why at first and I am still critical of how Rachel handled this but then part of me was like is it social with a majority to help Andy and I was like it's actually not you know like yeah. if I have to ask myself the golden question that I've just put out there as like the secret yeah then going off alone with Andy is not social for the majority and so I do see parts of that. We do see Sierra putting it on John and Andy for going off alone. If she's doing part of yes. that, you hate to be the name. Um, and I think that she's a big super fan who also has like, she was the alternate um, and she's like had such a journey to get here and she doesn't yeah. want to put herself out there. And ironically, parts of her own like strategy focus and paranoia and like care for the game might be playing out in a way where she's like, Andy, yeah. me, and really? Yeah. Like, do I and have to really be 
Yeah, but it kind of showed a little bit of lack of empathy. But yeah, yeah and and is that because she's so focused on getting her mark on the game or is it that she and and therefore she doesn't have that capacity to show that empathy but what if she'd actually said to the tribe look he's spinning out over here he's asking for me look I feel like I really should go over I'll let you guys know what's happening when I get back but um he's look he's obviously not going through it he's really having a hard time right now I'm going to go and help him I feel like if she just communicated stuff like that then yeah. probably the rest of the tri- rest of the tribe would have been like you know what good good on you girl that's a really nice thing to do go and help him out um he obviously feels like he he can lean on you let's you know let's let's see where that goes so yeah it's interesting interesting dynamic i um look i i can see that she's really 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 focused on this game and she doesn't want to jeopardize her position and you know you can see that side of it as well can't you you know you you it takes a lot to get out there, so you do not want to put yourself in a position where you might jeopardise jeopardize your role. So I I feel like if there'd been maybe a bit more communication, then maybe she would have been able to kind of do both, show some empathy yeah. for Andy and really be there for him, but re- then really come back to the rest of the tribe and go, you know what, he's having a meltdown, I've sorted him out, let's go to sleep. I think that's a brilliant point, and it's kind of what I was thinking in terms of she actually could have her cake and eat it too here. That's right. Um, because, I mean, like, you want to cultivate the spiraler. Um, yeah. Kenzie, with her social superpower, did it really well with Ben. Ex- exactly. Caleb does it with Emily in a way that yes, saves him yes. in the game. It's yes. essential, but because it's because it's so good for your game, yes, it could be threatening. If anyone clocks, like, is she trying to Emily him? Is she trying to Caleb and Emily this? Like, they can yeah. see that that is threatening. And I, I see why that's good and also maybe a, possibly a red flag. But as you're saying, this did not need to be mutually exclusive. There was a no. way really yeah. genuinely to bring the tribe into this for the reasons of he was genuinely like personally spiraling beyond the game and so that's if, bad if for him as a yeah that's that's right like if you're waking up somebody to, to because you're yeah. having a meltdown in the middle of the night like you're obviously in a really bad place and yeah. so he's being very vulnerable to the yeah. rest of the tribe and to her by go, by displaying those emotions as he did so yeah, could there have been a little exactly. bit more? Yeah. Yeah, I think that in terms of the fact that it's bad for him as a human to be spiralling and it's good to connect as humans in a way that may help you mm. in the game by just helping mm. that person. And B, it's really bad for the tribe if he's spiralling. Look how badly that went the next day. So oh, you can easily go back to the tribe and just be like, Andy was having a moment. I've helped it. Like, it actually that's is right. for the tribe. And if that pays off for you personally, that's a really good thing. Like, I don't think it really needed a painter as a threat. I see the concerns, but I think she could have done both. Um, and I think that yeah, that would have been 100%. the way to go. And yeah. that's what and I, think, I would yeah. have done. Yeah, I would yeah. have I would have tried to have aligned, like been there for him but communicated to the tribe, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. 100%. Like I think that you want to cultivate that. And if like it's still too threatening, like you can still cut him. Like cultivate that, make sure he's okay for him, for the tribe, for yourself, like all wins across the board. And if it's still a little too threatening, then you can still just cut him. But like yeah. what but you don't want to do he's a vote for her like if yeah. she whichever way she wants to go like he's one vote for her and well i don't even and know he, anymore <laughs> or you reckon? he said he, that she didn't make him feel better and he was going for annika who's like her pair ally so if yeah. anything i think she lost him i think that you know best case scenario you keep him you you cultivate it and are able to keep him second best you cultivate it but still have to lose him third yeah, best what? You That's lose right. the relationship, but then at least you cut him. And fourth best, which is what happened, you lose a relationship, but you keep him in the game. So I feel like that yeah. was like the worst case scenario of how That's those right. kind of decisions could have been played out, unfortunately. But I don't think I that's the way she was thinking. I, I 100% agree with you, but I feel like that's not the way that she was thinking because I think that the way that she should have done it, she should have cultivated that relationship just a little bit further like just get him to trust her and you know see what happens going forward because that is one vote for with her yeah the the I think feel like the kind of specter of disaster tribes like looms large over the matter of the season they wanted so badly to not be the disaster tribe that they're like we'll try and keep a little bit more physicality and ironically that might make be them the there might be prophecy that there's now to keep Andy I think is actually possibly going to make them the disaster tribe which is very very unfortunate um yeah really painful there's a couple of things I want to talk about just from a vote perspective um, that I find really interesting the first one being 
They choose to keep Andy. We disagree with it. But what they choose to do in keeping Andy is they bring him into the vote. He votes for John. He doesn't vote for Annika. Um, they don't throw a vote, at least a vote, if not two of their four on Andy to protect against. One vote would be against like a shot in the dark if John plays it and exactly. Andy votes for one of them. Or yeah, an idol. An idol. Yeah, yeah if, they, if they both find an idol, then they need two votes on um, Andy in case, you know, to take it to um, the tie and then the revote where they would win. So they would, yeah, they would win. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you think well, about that? I, th as a I think it was, I don't think they were thinking outside the box at all. Like they weren't. No thinking. boxes, Caroline, please. I can't. <laughs> But they weren't. Like, why weren't they thinking like that? Why weren't they thinking that, okay, what hap why aren't we splitting at least one vote? Because what happens if John has got something? Then one of us are going home. Or Annika's going home. Why didn't Annika think of it? So, yeah. What yeah. For Annika? Pardon? A lot of risk for her specifically. A lot of risk for her specifically because yeah. she knows through, well, she knows through Andy that that John's going to be throwing a vote her way. So, yeah. If it she wasn't doesn't know, that's concerning. She should know she's the name. So she's really yeah, taking the risk. Uh, yeah. I think she would have known. Like, yeah, I through feel Sam. Like that she's through the name. either Sam or Andy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, through them both, like because they've both like they've both communicated with John that that's where he wants to go. So, yeah, it's um, it's it it look, I, it's it's not smart gameplay to me. And why they didn't think about it, it's going to be oh god, I don't want another disaster yellow tribe. But I think this is the way we're going, isn't it? I actually really like the decision to do this. It was risky, especially for Annika, but I do think that it was social with a majority you know like yeah. i think that sometimes i see what you're saying pains. and i think i think with splitting the vote is very situational um and sometimes it, it is really necessary um and there but was you, risk. You, yeah yeah but do you want to take that risk if it's you like why would I annika so. want to take that risk i think the risk the reason you take the risk is like what if you never go back to tribal council and you're going to have mm. to work with Andy through the game. Like now they're really trying to like, again, like cultivate that relationship and manage it where they could throw a vote on him and have him spiral worse. Like if you're keeping him in to help with challenges, if you're trying to manage that, which again, I think is more work than it is and they shouldn't have done mm. to begin with. But if they are, and even if they've done it the opposite way, I think they would have brought John in. I think they're like, yeah. let's try and be a cohesive five and they've brought Andy in. He could go back to John. He doesn't. Um, they're yeah. reading possibly yeah. that well that he won't want to yeah. end even more than he has. So I think they're yeah. reading that well. They're investing in the fact that they don't need to, well, they just based on Andy, they're not going to throw a vote. They're going to bring Andy in and, you know, maybe quell some of that anxiety and really have him trust them. And mm. that to be fair is what they do. Andy doesn't go back to John. John doesn't play a shot in the dark. So yeah. in reading Andy, I think that they were correct. Um, there's also the risk that John could just play a shot in the dark, even if um, Andy isn't turning but if Andy's what? not turning then he, then it's it? five to zero anyway so if yeah. Andy so they're really having to read Andy because if Andy hasn't turned and he's yeah. going to vote with them and isn't going to tell yeah. John then the only risk is that John plays a shot in the dark five zero you vote out Andy on the revote when it's zero zero if the shot in the dark in the small chance that the shot in the dark hits so they're needing to read will yeah. Andy really come to us really vote with us um and I think you know it's the best way to go um yeah, You've so that. I think that, that this was right. I think that I think that it's it's social, which I'm liking. Yeah. You know, mm. yeah. I, I I like what I'm hearing from you. It's a different like. There's two sides to it, isn't there? So yeah. you've just got, you've got to decide which way you how you're going to play it. Um, are you going to play it socially or are you going to play it strategically? Yeah, I mean, Andy as well could throw a vote. Because, again, if John does play a shot in the dark, which he was thinking about and we'll talk about if he should have, but if John does play a shot in the dark, then 5-0 Andy goes home. If he throws a vote, then he's one vote. But I think as well for Andy, after you've, hey, again, expended yeah. so much social capital, unfortunate to be in that position to begin with, but then at least, you know, now you're trying to protect against if John even plays it and then the shot in the dark hits, or you try and make up some goodwill by actually doing what they told you to do and actually That's making right. some relationships. And, yeah. again, like some of these things feel like if everything goes wrong, like if John plays you on the dark and it hits or I mean I think you need to read Andy correctly but if Andy turns on you against your read and John does mm -hmm. have an idol he tells him to play the show in the dark and it hits and Andy's voted all of that would have to go wrong to kind of upend this or you do the social thing and hope for the best and I think sometimes like playing those odds is the best thing and I think that's true of this group and I think it's true of Andy to be social even with the you know percentage chance 
that yeah. shown the dark hits or there's something that could be played against you. I would rather, I think, be more social here on a tribe that desperately needs to come together. Yeah. Based on everything I, that's happened. And, and clearly Andy didn't, he didn't have that thought process that maybe yeah. I should be thinking about um, what happens if John does um, – do his shot in the dark. What's what's that going to mean for me? Um, he obviously he wasn't in a state where he could think like that, and he could think through that strategy. Sorry, just turn this off. Think through that strategy so that it um, it meant that he wasn't going home. So he he obviously he's not there yet, but hopefully he's coming. Yeah, like the thing is, like if if John plays a shot in the dark and it hits. It's a really unfortunate way to go home for Andy or if, if Andy throw, if Andy throws a vote and that's how Annika goes or, you know, if Andy turns on you and they have an idol, yeah. you know, like it would just be a really unfortunate way to go home. Sometimes you have to yeah. just like hope for the best and not be super paranoid. Sometimes like as we're seeing, I think that like excessive paranoia and doing everything you can to kind of, you know, quell that paranoia, yeah. thinking of every contingency yeah. is not the right thing to do. And being is it social with the majority, you know, that's the way to be more broadly social. And so why didn't John play his shot in the dark? Let's talk he, about that. Yeah, so we well, talked about this in the exit interviews and I want to disagree with the I way have, John I have, Yeah, right. I haven't listened to his exit interviews. Yeah, so I'll, sorry, I haven't had it, time. No. This is what he said. He said basically like he felt not great about actually if Sam would go with them and he felt like, you know, in the chance that Sam does go with them, maybe it's like a 20% chance, which is better than the right. one in six of the shot in the dark. So he was going to go with that with right. Sam and right. take the odds on that of what he thought were bad odds either way. But just to clarify, so if yes. just Sam goes with him, it's a 3-3. And I'm sorry, but like Andy and Sam are out the door immediately. They're not going to rocks for you and he's out anyway. Um, right. If Sam brings Sierra in, which was the plan, it's a 4-2. Yeah. And whether you vote or not, it's a 3-2. So I would take the extra protection of my shot in the dark either way. The only thing you will lose, ironically, is the social capital, which I know I've been, you know, banging mm. the drum about. Mm. But I think at this point, the risk was too great that you, now you just need to survive. Like now it's not about building social relationships. Now exactly. It's about you the just need so, to survive. Yep. But for me, like I would be playing my shot in the dark as extra protection for him hundred percent. Like either you're definitely out like it was and you need the protection yeah. or it's a three, three and you're out. So your vote doesn't matter. Or it's a four, two and now it's a three, two and you have extra protection. Like I don't see where it could go wrong to play the shot in the dark for him. Yeah, I, I agree. And I also feel like, um my point um, that I'm trying to make is that if if he if he doesn't play his shot in the dark like he he knows that he's obviously going to be going home I've just lost my train of thought I I, I had this point that he needed to play, he either needed to play a shot in the dark or rely on Sam and relying on Sam you didn't you obviously couldn't you could he he didn't know he hadn't didn't have enough social capital in that relationship to know whether he could rely on him or not in the fir in the first place so yeah it was a really really hard and you spot could do both. like you you could rely on sam and if sam has voted with you and you go social your straw in the dark doesn't matter because you've won in a three two vote where andy sam and sierra voted with you yeah then great and you come back to camp it's like hey why did you vote with us it's like i heard my name a lot there were yes. two votes against me like yeah i'm sorry that that makes me seem like a you know, a shaky ally, and I will definitely try and build that back. But like, can you blame me? And he would yeah. have a lot of points on that. So I think that it's the fact that he actually could have had, you know, he can try the Sam thing and try the shot in the dark thing, and they're not mutually exclusive, and they're both different types of protection to try and yeah. work. Probably neither works out. He probably still goes home. But he tried, you know, going with Sam, and I think that he also at no loss to him could have played the shot in the dark because again, if he's relying on his own vote for a three-three, then he's lost. Because yeah. Andy has literally just said he'd throw his, him under the bus. And Sam's That's not right. going to rock for him. So he's out anyway. So yeah. I don't see why his vote mattered. Um, yeah. I think he, he, he needed, it needed to be a shot in the dark. Yeah. 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 And even then, even if the, even with that logic, I still think it's good for Andy to be like, well, it's logical for him to play a shot in the dark. And I'm still going to hope on the 83% chance that it doesn't hit and I'll make friends. And I still think yes. that, that is right. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was his best chance. Yeah, so really unfortunate to lose John Lovett, who I loved. I loved it him. Um, he was so funny. And so, his type of humour speaks to me directly. Oh, I know. I love like, it I'm going to start listening to his podcast. This yeah, is exactly Everything he said made me laugh. 
Yeah. Every, my every husband listen to, listens to his podcast and he's like, I don't know why you're not listening to it at the moment. I mean, I have never been more fascinated in American politics as I am right now and I'm listening to every other podcast on it. So I can't believe I'm not listening to it. But he said it's don't absolutely it. fantastic. Yeah, he's absolutely He was wonderful. great. Yeah. I think that like other than just being maybe like the bit of the older guy who didn't fit in as much and just yeah. being seen as less physical, like, and they're not playing the shot in the dark. Those are my main criticisms. I don't yeah. think that throwing out Annika affected anything because I think it was purely physical. I think Andy's doing it alongside him. Um, I think he knew when they were saying to him it's Andy that it actually was him. He says in the ex interview that he doesn't think throwing out Annika actually changed things. It was always him, and I agree. So I don't oh. think he really did much wrong. I think he mostly just was like the 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 de facto vote here in a six person tribe that's focusing on physicality. Um, right. And I think he should have played a shot in the dark. Those are my only real questions. So does he talk about why he didn't play a shot in the dark? Yeah, because he thinks that he was trying to go with the Sam thing. But I'm yeah, just right. like, but then you didn't need your vote with the Sam thing. So no. I still am like, I hate to disagree. John Love it. I think, I think he's going to think about that for a long time. I know I will. And I yeah. wasn't even me. So <laughs> no, but I, I think that that's, but I'm just really upset about it. Anything else on the dynamics of this tribe? Um, He kind of gave it a different view of the dynamics. I think we, we see it as pairs and he agrees that we saw it as kind of Andy and John put into a pair together. We yeah. see it as like Annika and um Rachel to a degree and then Sierra with Sam. And we kind of saw Sierra as Sam in the middle. He actually said he felt better about Annika and Rachel as much as the um votes kind of fell on Annika at the end. Mm -hmm. um, he felt better about them. So I don't think the centrality that I thought Sam specifically had was as locked in as I thought. But I think, yeah, I think we're going to go down to that four regardless. But it'd be interesting that then I think that there's probably like two kind of pairs there. Yeah. I. But I also feel like we're not getting to any kind of depth with those relations, like seeing seeing those relationships form, are we? Yeah, like no, why are they pairs? That's what I want. Yeah, to exactly. We, we're yeah. not seeing it. So like, yes, we can see that they're a pair, but we're not seeing the how and the why. And um, I, I can't wait to see more. of. I want more of that. We need yeah. more depth with the, that, that character um, presentation kind of thing. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else from the other tribes who really stood out to you? Let's talk about Lavo, the red tribe. Anyone there that yep. you're like really Lavoing yourself? Well, well, obviously we're talking about Asia. I mean, she was, you know, she's obviously going to, she knows this game super, super well. So it's going to be really interesting to see whether she's going to be able to hold herself back and not try and do too much too early to really show how much she knows about this game. And knowing that Teeny's going to kind of protect her a little bit, that's, I mean, that's, that's just gold right there. I, um, I mean, we didn't really see much from Gen Genevieve. Um, Keyshawn looks absolutely fantastic. Like, I love the fact that he's an ER doctor out there. You know, so this is a guy that's going to be super, super calm under pressure. Um, I mean, he's seen everything. So what, being out there in an environment like this, he'd just be like, calm down, guys. It's going to be fine. No one's dying here. So, you know, calm your farm, which I, I love. Really um, an important skill for the game. It's Patience such an important harm. Yes. Yeah. I think they were two of my and uh, two of my greatest skills out there was being because you know being a midwife you're thrown like an ER doctor you're thrown into all sorts of shitty situations and you know it is remaining calm under pressure all the time. So um I I I I, I look forward to seeing how that goes. Um Rome my gosh <laughs> my gosh apparently apparently he um yeah he he wants to replace uh jeff in um when jeff decides he wants to step down from his throne but i just thought he was acting too shady too suspicious you know he broke that number one rule about when you go out there and separating yourself from everybody else in the game by going out and looking for the um beware advantage and idols you just got to be so careful the way that you do that and try not to put a target on your back. And I feel like he's really put a target on his back. Um, Soul was, I mean, we only saw a little bit of Soul and seeing that excerpt from um, that that one that didn't make it to the um, to the show on Rome's um, ex this morning. Um, that was that was absolutely fantastic. And then Teeny, Teeny, she was awesome i loved her social game out there 
She is going to be so gorgeous to watch. I um, I can see that she's a fan, but also I think she's got like strategy and she's got social um, and I can't wait to see how that unfolds and whether she can kind of bring that four together. I feel like she's going to be the one that's going to bring that four together in that tribe. Teeny, you really stood out to me. I yes. felt like even if it's not that four, they are connected to every one. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what four. She she yeah. knows that she's got to get a four, and whatever that four looks like, it doesn't matter because yeah. I feel like she's going to be the one that's in control of that. I think Asia thinks that she might be the one that should be in control of that, and she'd like to be in control of that. But yeah, Teeny's going to be her her um her ticket into a four. Yeah. Teeny wants to have like, you know, she says, I want to be everyone's number one, which is a yeah. hard, you know, that's yeah. a hard goal. But it's seemingly, if not everyone's number one, it's seemingly working that they have relationships with every person. Oh, I want her game. to be my number one. She's well, like, there you she's go. Just, yeah, she's fantastic. She was definitely my standout for that tribe. Yeah. And yeah. I know, I know that they focus quite a bit on her, but I felt like what, what she brought to the game and and her interviews and everything she she just seemed like she's got it all together and i really loved listening to her she was funny she was yeah she was she's going to be one that i'm going to be following and rooting for i think yeah they're making everyone laugh from the very beginning yeah and then individually connecting with each person like i feel like she has with with Keyshawn, who i also think is doing really well kind of mm. there with teeny i feel like the two of them could go and they won't but they could go with roman genevieve and they probably will go with like Soul and Asia. Asia. Even the way that like Teeny connected with um, Genevieve, it's like maybe you can like get Rome out, but still kind of keep Genevieve close to you. Yeah. Especially because Rome is doing so well to bury himself individually that you couldn't even really get yeah. mad at it. Yeah. So not much going on. I mean, like all I know is like this tribe could go to every tribal council and yeah. Teeny would be last voted out. And that is a yes. great space to be. And I mean, everything how- can change, but right now that's that's how it seems. Yeah, I I'm I, I couldn't agree more. I and because nobody's going to want to vote her out. She's not putting any kind of social pressure on anyone. She's being everyone's. Um, she's being everything to everyone, and that's a really really hard thing to do because and it's it it just shows that her personality. She's very good at adapting to whoever she's around, and that's far out that's amazing life skill to have and she's what she's 24 so my son is 24 today (laughs) and happy birthday happy birthday jack um and he uh you know like yeah she's he 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 doesn't have the social capital that she couldn't do that well just the drive-by just the birthday drive-by on your own son (laughs) that he couldn't do as well on I love him more than life itself, but you know, um, I he knows that he couldn't do survival. He, he's like, no, 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 well, he's, he's like, very, very mom, I no, I, I'd, I'd, I'd hate being mean to anyone. He's like, I couldn't betray anybody, so he couldn't do that. Whereas I feel like Teeny's, yeah, she's 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 gonna be awesome to watch. I'm so excited to see yeah. her game play out. I think there's more strategy in her to come as well. And I feel like, you know, she, I, it, it'll be interesting to see how her relationship with Asia goes as well. Yeah, because it's a very dynamic alliance that she's building. It's not pairs. Yeah. It's not like it's Soul and Asia that we've seen. Yeah. And we haven't seen enough. But um, you know, Teeny has something with Genevieve and with Rome, so she's connected yeah. to that pair. Then she's got Kishan. Then she's Asia's number one. Yeah. And she seems to possibly have a group with Sol. So it's not even like they could vote out maybe Roman, even Genevieve, and even then she'd be in a three. Then they could take out Sol. Like this is obviously a lot will change, but if you just like yeah. forward plan how that could go. Yeah. Teeny's good to go. So I think. One thing I will say. Yeah. One thing I will say about Survivor is that the game changes from one day to the next. Like you think you're screwed one day and then 24 hour, in 24 hours your game completely, completely changes. Yeah, Andy. And... So. <laughs> exactly. Poor well, Andy. let's see what happens with Andy. He needs to really, really turn around. What about um, Tuku? We've talked obviously about game. Let's We've talked, you know, who, who stood out for you on this tribe? Um, gosh, probably Gabe was the one that stood out. I mean, he was I was doing a lot of box centered activities. He was, and they were centered quite a lot on him. Um, 
I mean, bringing in Sue as quickly as he did, you know, actually saying to her verbally, you know, I my strategy coming in was to go and seek out the older woman because I know you're going to be wise. I know you've lived, you know, a long life. You know, you've got you're a like, lot of older life. who? Why is how? <laughs> Only on two. <laughs> well, well, and I mean, it would have been music to her ears as well because as the older woman, are you are you just you just don't want to be the first one voted up. Like, and so I hope that there has been a little bit more conversations going on and that they are really trying to form a four out there as quickly as possible and that Sue and Gabe are part of it. And, um, yeah, that they can bring in probably Caroline and let's see who else they can bring in. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, they've all got really, really interesting stories. Um, Tiana, she's also one that I really liked watching and especially pre-game, like in the pre-season. Yeah. She was really, really interesting, the first Hawaiian to be on Survivor. And she, yeah, she. you can see that she's got the smarts about her and she really, really wants to be strategic and really smart about how she plays the game. And then TK, um, well, you know, he's also such an interesting guy. He's, he's come sparkly. along. Pardon? He's a sparkly person, TK. You could just tell he's, the way the charisma, yes. like, yeah. shone from him when he came back to the beach. Yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Tevin in a way because it just got that, you know, beautiful sparkle about him. And, you know, wouldn't it be a great four with um, Sue, Gabe, Caroline and TK? That would be unreal. But then I love Tiana as well. And, yeah, we'll have to see what happens with Kyle. Yeah, Tiana went a little missing considering she was like a really high winner pick um, from the preseason. You know what's interesting as well is that, like, Gabe didn't put his hand up to do the journey given everything else we subsequently learned about Gabe. I know. Um, yeah, which is kind of a strange one. Um, it's but This so tribe is – Yeah. No, you go, you go. Oh, no, th this tribe is just really interesting because I feel like there's um, a few different um, ways that it could go. Like we're yeah. hearing that it could be, okay, like Caroline, Gabe, and Sue, when we hear that Sue's really central, but then we hear that there might be a bit of a boys club, but then we know that yeah. Gabe and TK have the issue. So I don't know That's where right. this tribe is going to go. I don't think that this has been – certified or you know no worked it's out not being way. completely worked out like you can and that's where I guess we wish that we were seeing more don't we so that we could see where these alliances are going we just want to see where the alliances are and who's going to shit all over who <laughs> yeah exactly but <laughs> yeah yeah I mean there's yeah Tiana she she's gone missing a lot I don't know where because she, she's the one who doesn't fit into any of the groups that I just pointed no out. that's right so I'm not sure where she's at yeah did you know that she was an alternate for 45 as well? Yeah, so she was alternate for 45, the only person in the world who could actually be angry that Hannah quit. And then <laughs> yeah. um Wow. Yeah, she was she must have been really mad. And then Rachel, the 46 alternate, we're really getting through the alternates. I hope so. I hope that every alternate who ever goes out there gets a chance to play. Like going yeah. out there being an alternate and never getting to realize that dream is would be more frustrating than I could even possibly yeah. imagine. Good so. on you, Survivor. We're really happy that you've yeah. done that. Like Works and for the alternate. Yeah, work through the alternates because obviously they've been chosen for a reason. Like it's so hard to get out there. I can't imagine sitting out there for that for that time and turning around and going home. Yeah, <laughs> never being on TV and and then not even getting it's, to be like to tell people about it because you're hoping to still be cast. So you just have this thing exactly, exactly like part yeah. of you and so private and so yeah. so yeah. Good, good for Tiana and Rachel being on the show. And yes. I hope that it works out very very well for them that it was right for them to be on this season of all the seasons yeah who's your fave on this tribe um let me think I really do like TK yeah um I like Sue I think Sue's I think Sue did the best we'll talk about it as we're about to talk about the Chizzy but I think Sue did very well so I think you know Gabe's playing too hard for me I, I like mm. all of them like from a character standpoint but yeah Gabe's mm. playing too hard for me and um Caroline's fun too um, I yes. like kind of the whole analytical smart woman thing, of course. Yeah. So yeah. it's fun too. It's a good yeah. cast. The show didn't yeah. show enough about what a good cast this is. Because from the pregame, I was in love across the board and I still am. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, give me more, you know? Yeah, give us more. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, I felt like I've been complaining a lot about Sweat versus Savvy because I complain. Because it's been annoying for a few seasons and they're like, we're going to replace it. Jeff actually was like, before it gets stale, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're really – not a moment you, too soon, Jeff. You, you right so, yeah, we're going to replace it. I'm like, oh, she really made it. Um, and then we're going to replace it with just like something that was also like, what? This is this is this is just sweat. This is just a different sweat. And like, 
go back to like making the decisions. Like it was a decision to go and that was what was interesting. But yeah. make, give me the decision making about, you know, like yeah. I don't just want people to have talked it to death. Yeah. No more keys, yeah. no more boxes. I think it's I think it's been done. Yeah, it's done. Um I'm gonna do the chizzy theme song on video and we're gonna Yay. see if it works. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna do the chizzy. All right, okay. Take it away, Jacob, take wine scene and MC color, maybe. Two, three. One, two. Oh, it was going again. You heard that, right? Yes. Okay, it worked. Okay. Woo! We're gonna work it out on video. We're still getting the the kinks out, but it worked. Okay, we're gonna do the chizzy. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first, or should I go first? You go first. All right. I think this one's pretty simple. I'm giving yeah. three votes to Teeny. It's been spoken about. Yeah. Very social. Exactly how you should start. Great. Takes yeah. across the board. No yeah. notes. Brilliant. Two. Yeah. I'm giving to Sue, who I yeah. feel like is a central member of that tribe. Caroline's like everyone wants to work with Sue, which I believe from the pregame where they all wanted to work with Sue. She's brought in by Game on the Beware Advantage. She seems to have two really key allies. She's described yeah. as central. I mean, even if she's not the most central person, that's a narrative we're getting, which is very important. Yeah. And I also believe that she probably is doing very well there. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to give a point to Sam, who I dropped down from two points after listening to John's exit interview. Um, I almost could give no points to Gotta because I feel like I really didn't like the decision to keep Andy from a strategic perspective. I know. Um, and I also feel like the dynamics are less secure or less clear than they were on the show where it felt like Sam was a real, he was a real swing vote, but it felt like he was really central because he was yeah. a swing vote. Um, John kind of said two things that made me bring this down from a two to a one, which is again, that he felt actually better about Rachel and Annika and maybe um, Sam isn't as central as I thought. And the other part was I thought that he did really good work to blindside John for John not to play a shot in the dark, but then John is yeah. saying he was only like 20% sure about Sam. Anyway, it feels like it was more of a miscalculation from John not to play the show in the dark than on Sam. In saying that, I will give a point because I do like his approach to try and blend in as much as he can and be more kind of that middle figure as a kind of big mm. guy. They did mm. go to him as a swing vote, so that has to speak to something. And he is doing some work to bring John yes. in so that John doesn't play the show in the dark. Like if John feels like he has no chance of Sam, then it feels like he is playing the show in the dark. Yeah. So at least yeah. to make him think that he has that chance to protect against that when they, again, are taking the risk of not covering for a possible shot in the dark and Andy throwing a vote or, you know, when they're just not taking that risk um, so that they can socially cover, I feel like he is doing some work there. So those are the points that I'm giving. And then I'll give an honorable, men an honorable mention to Kishan, who I feel is doing well with Teeny. What are yes. your points? Okay. Well, I think we're both the same with um, my three points are going to Teeny. I felt like right from the get-go from her um, her first interview with Jeff on the mat, she just really spoke to me. She's obviously going to gain, she's already gained that great social capital in her game. She's, and she's smart about it. Like she's not bitching about people. She's being really strategic and very adapting to everybody that's around her. And, and I, I don't know, she's somebody that just really spoke to me. I feel like she's, I know she's a huge fan of the show and I feel yeah, she she was my absolute favorite this this episode for sure. Um, so I'm going to give her three, two. I've thought about, and it, I I don't want to. I'm not copying you, but I just don't know where else it can go because I feel like Sue has. Yeah. Pardon? It felt pretty clear to me. This season. yeah, it it, yeah. it is super clear, and and I mean also as the older woman, she's really trying to blend in. She's really trying to get to know people. She also looks incredibly physically strong, so I feel like she's going to bring a lot of strength to the tribe, which is awesome. Um, but I loved her relationship that she that I love Gabe coming to her. I love the way that she just you know she immediately warmed to that. She immediately brought him in, and then I also loved her relationship with Carol. Caroline, I felt like her and Caroline really connected on a very beautiful um, emotional level. And it's really nice to find your people out there. It's such a strange environment to be in and to try and find people that you trust. But there's some people that you certainly click with straight from the get-go. And I know that happened with certainly Kitty and then Eden. So I know what that feels like to just kind of really feel like you found a person that you can connect with. So I'm going to give my two to Sue and my three. Oh, is this, is it, so did you give three to Teeny or one to Teeny? No, I'm giving three to Teeny, two okay, to so Sue. One, 
Yeah, and then one point, yep. And I've got my one pointer to go. And I think I'm going to give my one pointer to Asia um, okay. because, yeah, because I feel like she's, she put herself up for that first, for that first challenge. And I know she's a huge fan of the show, but I, I know that it would have been an extremely big decision for her to go and put herself out there to do that, not knowing whether she was going to bring home the goods for the tribe or not. Um, I think coming back and really getting integrating herself back into the tribe, that's like I talked about before, that's her superpower, getting herself back into the tribe, knowing that she, um, she, you know, that discussion with Teeny and Teeny saying, I know who you are and I love you and I, I know that this is probably something that you don't want shared with the rest of the tribe. I think the way that she handled all that, she was quite calm and I really, I, 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 I feel like she did very, very well integrating herself back into the game. So I'm going to give her a one. And special mention, I think I'm going to do TK. I just think he's a personality that we're going to all really, really love. Um, and I can't wait to see how the rest of this unfolds. It's been, I think, like I said earlier, it's one of the first best first episodes I've seen in that in the new era. And it really grabbed me. And knowing that you know, getting to know these people pre-season has just been incredible. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds and, yes, yeah, see where all this, where this crazy game takes them all. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I agree. I think that there's, you know, yeah, TK, really charismatic, Asia does Very. that social work. But I feel like on my thesis point being be social, you can't yeah. win the game in the first day, but you can lose yep. it. You can't win the game in the first few days, but you can lose it. I, I felt like I had to go to those kind of like social players and I definitely documented yeah. for anyone who did anything individual, strategy oh, no. based, too, too no. much. And then I, I had to bring it down from there. Yeah, that's right. It was, look, I, I think you and I both saw that both Teeny and Sue were standouts and Teeny especially. So yeah. it was really, really, really good to watch. Um, we were definitely on the same page there. Um yeah, it's going to be it's going to be wonderful to see how all this plays out. I um, yeah. I'm really 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 excited. I um, it's you know Survivor 47. You can't believe that this has been going for 24 years, and um, I know that the new seat the new era has has had its challenges for sure. But I love watching any season of Survivor, and this this is right up there. Yeah, well, I'm excited about it. Is anything we missed? Is anything else you wanted to say about? <laughs> Any of these people? Let's, uh, let's just wanted to have, we had some questions on Twitter. I just wanted to make sure that we. Yeah, I think we got to a lot of the, the Twitter. A lot of them I were about so. Sue. Not just Sue. Yeah. A lot of people just wanted to yeah. tell you that they love you, remind you that they love you. Thank you to those yeah. people. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> um, to Eden days. asked asked about Gabe and Sue's alliance and um, seeking out an older woman um, and what their future look like. Look, it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic there. He's a comms director. She's a pilot. They're both go-getters. They both want to make a name for themselves. I think they're going to be strong power players if they don't get overconfident um, with, and keep their tight bonds with the rest of the tribe. I think that's really important that they, yes, they can have their really tight bond, but it's going to be about not getting overconfident in in having that number one and really bringing the another two in, but bringing the rest of the tribe in so that they're co nice and cohesive. Um, did right, Matt said, did Rachel have the right idea that it was too risky risky to openly work one on one with Andy? And I think we've already discussed yeah, through that. Yeah, we talked through. Uh, we try to get to everything. Yeah. 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 Evan yeah. yeah was, absolutely. Was John's optimal move to accept being the secondary vote? I don't feel he was ever the yeah. secondary vote. I don't think that whether he accepted it or not would have I, I don't think it. so he either. Was the vote and then he would have gone home either way. So yeah. there was nothing he could do there at that point other than play Sean in the dark. I think at that point he was kind of yeah. she warned into being that. And, yeah, I don't think they were being honest that it was Andy. And I don't think the Annika move that Andy was doing with him um, pushed it any which way for him. I just think that they were, like, really no. scared about being, being the disaster tribe and thought that Andy was a little bit stronger as much as we disagree with that. He said, whose game yeah, benefits the most from Andy staying? I don't think that anyone benefits from Andy's. Andy does. I do. I'm excited. I'm as sad as it was to lose John. I'm really happy that Andy gets a second shot at this. But, yeah, I mean, I don't see who on the try specifically benefits from this. Um, 
No, I Maybe just and no. he's a bit close with Sam, where John said he wasn't close with Sam, but probably not. I mean, I don't think it'll benefit them physically. I, obviously, Annika was being thrown out by both of them. Rachel, I feel like, yeah. hasn't done well with that, and she'd have to really bring it back. It'd have to be like a complete one eighty. So I think it's particularly bad for her. I don't, I don't see a, anyone even getting like any individual benefit, let alone a collective benefit. No, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, in my notes, possibly a shield for Sam. Um, but is he, Rachel, is he even shield. now, especially after know. the match, would be a shield for anyone? No, well, no. Um, yeah. But Rachel, um, if she can rein in his trust again, um, and that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Like if any part and of this was like John's more threatening and John can speak and all of that, like that would be even worse. Like that would be an even worse yeah. decision to try and like implode your own <laughs> tribe by keeping the wrong person because you're worried that John will speak better than you in 23 yeah. days. That are, Like we should not be thinking about that. So if any part of that was on the threatening nature of John Lovett against Andy, that would be another negative for me. Really not into the, yeah. I didn't get it. It wasn't right for me. Well, and I feel, and, and obviously, they felt that they can they can kind of manoeuvre Andy a little bit more than they could have possibly with John. That's well, that would be crazy can... too, given what we've witnessed over the last two days. Like Andy will be tough well, to let's... manage. I know, and let's see. He is. I don't think they realise how tough he is going to be to manage, and what a what a um a curveball he could really really throw into the game if he if he decides if he goes off the rails again and look i really really feel for andy i hope it doesn't i hope he can really just get his head together and really kind of sort himself out and sort his place in that tribe but we'll have to wait and see yeah a cohesive chilling tribe yes i can sleep yes. at night that john yeah. lovett is making you laugh that don't have to be watching yeah. Andy searching for idols. Like, let alone the fact that, like, Andy is a wild card and is definitely, if the other tribes have anything to say about it going on the next journey, you know, is possibly spilling more yeah. secrets. Like, he just needs to freak out one more time to say things on the map, to say things at a journey. Is he searching for idols? Like, I don't think that John was yeah. nearly as cagey for all of the risks to your majority that Andy would bring, given the two days of proof that we have of the kind of play he's been due to yeah. that paranoia and that anxiety. So I would rather show up with a slightly physically weaker tribe that's in a good head. Oh, yeah, I'd rather show up with a John than I would. Yeah, I'd rather show up with a John than an Andy. There's no question about that. John says he um, works out as well. And, so, yeah. Pardon? John says that he works out. What did you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, so, I I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, he wasn't, he's obviously, a, a, he must have been a strong guy. Like, he, did you see him bloody pushing those, the boxes back into the, to the boat? He fell out of the boat. He got back in the boat. Like, that would have been killer, mate. It would have been so hard. Yeah. Well, I think we're pretty, yeah, we're pretty low on that decision. I think that's been spoken about. But uh, I know Caroline, I, thank you so much. Um, I, there's just one more point I wanted to make. Yes, tell um, me. I, um, there was... Um, I just felt so sorry for everyone that went out in that first challenge when they had mud all over them because one of the things when you're out there is you just, like as much as you know it's not going to happen, you just want to try and keep a little bit clean. And so to go out for your first challenge and get muddy was because that just wrecks your clothes for the for the rest of the game. Like your clothes are absolutely screwed. I'm, I remember trying to scrub mud out of my, when we did the twisty through the mud, um, getting the mud out of your clothes was, was just a bloody nightmare. You just were just yeah, radical acceptance. You just had to accept that that's the way you were going to look for the rest of the game. And the other thing I wanted to point out was, did you see the size of their bags that they had? A lot of people are commenting on this. Uh, I haven't looked at. I haven't looked even looked at yeah. that. I just I just put that in my notes last night. It was like, oh my god! Like if we'd only had bags like that, because our bags were literally, I reckon, not even a quarter of the size of the bags that they had out there. They looked amazing. So lucky you guys. Well, little you do you know that those bags are probably just filled with more boxes. So who even knows? <laughs> and keys. 
and keys <laughs> and just which key, yeah. which box, and they'll just spend the next 26 days yeah. trying to work it out. Oh, sweetheart. So bad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this has been really fun, yeah. Caroline. Thank you so much for coming on and being my first video guest, my first recap guest of Survivor Thank 47. Thank you for having me. Of course. Tell the people where they can find you and what you're doing. So I'm on uh, Instagram at, at Mamalicious and I'm on TikTok. Um, you can find me under Caroline Cordes and also Mamalicious One. So, yeah, I'd love to see more of you guys out there. I have so enjoyed this, Shannon. I really like and, and preparing for something like this, just getting to know all the characters I and all the contestants, I've really, really loved. Hope I can come back on again and um, this has been a lot of fun. I always love doing stuff with you. You always bring out the best in everyone and I'm really grateful to have the opportunity thank you so much well it's been great to to have you on the podcast we we have a great guest next week as well we have the great Matthew Haywood from Survivor UK wow we're really excited about that I I watch Survivor UK yep yeah so excited to have Matt on the podcast we have yeah we've had a big news this week caroline and i I said it's very disappointing that you are here with me because it means that you're not in samoa and that's upsetting i'm not in samoa yeah unless you're doing this from samoa in which case i'm impressed (laughs) but yeah australia versus the world was announced and i don't know if anyone missed this but they announced it is tony poverty shawnee Kirby and George. So Rob and I did an emergency yeah. podcast about that if you missed it. But yeah, yeah. huge week. Huge. No, huge I listened. Week. I listened. Yeah. Yeah. And I was really yeah. excited that you did something because I, you know, I was trying to get as much information as I could. I mean, it's probably the most exciting news that we've had in Survivor in a very, very, very long time. And to get two seasons of potentially an Australian Survivor. So we're going to get next year, we're going to have two seasons of US Survivor and then two seasons of Australian Survivor. So yeah. it's going to be a busy year next year for I've done podcasting. More than that. And I've done well, five. we had, yeah, well, and well, we know that UK is not going to be on. Yeah. Unfortunately. There's no South Africa at the yeah. moment. Maybe they'd be South Africa. You know, I've done, yeah. there was like the New Zealand. I wasn't covering Australia, yeah. but I was watching and guesting. In 2018, we had Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and two US's. In 2019, oh, wow. we had, yeah. I guess, yeah. I think that was probably the busiest year. But it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm right. excited about it. Yeah. So, yeah, check yeah. out any of that content as well. But that's all I have. This has been but great. To get- great to break down the premiere. I know, but. I know, but to get Parvati, Tony, and Sari on I there, like I, I just I can't wait to grill Gert Kirby when she gets home. Like, and the and the funny thing is, Kirby, like she didn't know a lot about Survivor before she went. Kirby out doesn't to play even Titus realize what's space. going on. Yeah, she Kirby doesn't. Does not understand. She no, wow. I'm sorry. Very chill She's about gonna that. Be, it, I know, and I'm I'm really happy for her. Like, this is going to be. You know, she's out there with the big boys this time. It's going to be absolutely amazing for her. And I think it'll really test those skills that she showed in our season. And, like, Kirby is one of those people, though, that she thinks outside the box and she also, she can, she's sitting there watching everybody. She's watching and listening. And she was just such a pleasure to watch in, in my season. Yeah, I can't wait to see how that all unfolds. Um, I can't wait to see what happens between Shawnee and George. <laughs> and is Shawnee going to get retribution on Revenge on George for her last uh, season? Um, I mean, I love watching George. I love watching Shawnee. This is going to be Shawnee's fourth season. Gosh, how many days? Hopefully, you know, yeah, she's been out there well over 100 days. So it's massive for her, isn't it? She's leaving a yeah. baby. Yeah. I, know, I just a was. Baby. Tough. Yeah. Do we know how long it's going to be? Like how many days it is? Not on the record, but there's been no. rumors that I'm not confirming or denying that it might be a bit of a shorter season. The yeah, team, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the I, exhibition I, match of Australian Survivor. Yeah. Yeah, and how many yeah. contestants? Like, yeah, I'm listening to all the rumors and and every watching all the rumors and stuff as well. So, I um, yeah, I can't and I can't believe that we're going to have to wait another year to see it. Yeah, well, we don't yeah. even know when. And they're all. I know, and we've already been given six cast members. 
Yeah, it's the longest preseason in Survivor history, which is it's technically oh, now, absolutely and it will be maybe a whole yeah. year. So yeah, that would be. It's, I bet you it's going to be a whole year. Yeah, and have yeah. you got any guesses about who who else is like what other countries are going to be in it? Uh, not on the record. The the spread the press release said that South Africa and Norway, Finland, and New Zealand. Yeah, they just said yeah. Norway, yeah. New Zealand, and South Africa. Yeah, those right. were the three that they so gave. Yeah, so one of those one of those countries is going to have either one or two players because aren't yeah. we going out with seven? Yeah, not on the record. I don't know. I'm not sure we what we don't, what it, we don't no, know. I, but I'm you not, can find out. Yeah, they, you can find out who's not on it every week here on Survivor Global as I chat to the people from <laughs> Global Survivor. So that's a way to find out. Yeah. 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 Well, Thanks, follow and subscribe to make sure that you make sure you'll know some information around that yeah. based on my guests. But yeah, follow, subscribe to the International Survivor at Half Ups Feed. Follow me at Shannon Gates for all of this. Caroline, such a good time. Thank you so much again. Thanks for having me. See you soon. Right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this on YouTube or in podcast form. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.